and welcome to macro and market update for the month gone by that is november 2023 us equities have rallied in november us s&p was up by nearly 8 to 9% during the month year to date s&p is up by 18% or so 10 year us treasury yield has fallen by 50 basis point hence both bonds and equities delivered positive returns in november nifty rallied by nearly 6% last month slightly less than emerging market peers though most sectors in india were in green year to date biggest rally has been seen in real estate spurred by rising launches followed by cap goods and auto bond yields in india too softened by 10 basis point DXY weakened by 3% to 103 levels. Commodities softened a tad. All this was because US Fed paused yet again in its November policy. This has raised investors' hopes that US Fed has reached its terminal destination in hiking rates. Fed policy makers are starting to believe that the rise of US interest rates across the curve so far will prove sufficient to slow down the US economy over the coming months and could even push it into a recession but unlike the interest rate cycles in US observed since 1990s rates could stay put for long it is too early to claim victory over inflation in our view a genuine and a more sustained move to any asset class could only come once the global growth surprises to a material downside and recession fears take over from inflation and interest rate concerns until then in terms of asset class performance we could continue to see more of what we saw through entire 2023 with regards to usd more downside to the usd could be inhibited by the fact that US real yields are attractive relative to other developed economies and global growth prospects are softening which typically favors US dollar. USD INR traded in a tight range in 2023. Rupee depreciated only very modestly against the US dollar. This is largely due to the RBI's FX policy of accumulating FX reserves. when there are inflows and selling them to defend the INR when there are strong external headwinds in other words RBI's FX intervention is quite hands on we do not see the RBI's behavior changing in 2024 we forecast USD INR to drift very slightly upwards to 84 in 2024 some may wonder If the implementation of JP Morgan EM index inclusion in 2024 would change the INR's fortune there is US dollar 25 billion of bond related FII inflows expected during June 2024 to March 2025 but you know what what we noted is that rupee barely budged Despite the US dollar 24 billion of FII inflows in India in March to August 2023 mainly because RBI absorbed all the excess dollar hence the level of FX reserves by mid 2024 will be very critical to determine the benefits to rupee from FII inflow in India RBI made a significant regulatory change to consumer lending. It increased the risk weights that needs to be assigned to certain kind of consumer loans both by banks and NBFC plus the risk weights on loans extended by banks to NBFCs. Intent of the regulator is twofold. First, to contain unchecked flow of consumer credit and second, build up additional buffers for lenders to absorb potential credit cost from future delinquencies it will increase the cost of lending for the nbfcs and may moderate the system wide credit growth banks 
are well capitalized to absorb this one time hit on core equity capital at a time when profitability is very decent this measure from rbi may also lead to widening of spreads between double a and triple a nbfcs from macro stability point of view such counter cyclical measures are much warranted it helps to prevent the build up of excess risks in the system now coming to earnings outcome for second quarter fy24 this is the second consecutive quarter in which aggregate top line growth came in at 5% for nifty however the benefits of lower commodity prices and a strong performance in b2b sectors have resulted in a strong bottom line growth consensus earnings growth estimates stand at 25% for fy24 some of the themes that can be highlighted on the overall economy from earnings outcome are discretionary consumption volume growth across several segments remain muted rural demand is still uninspiring export segments volume growth is weak it companies are reducing the headcount order inflow for capital goods are moderating on the other hand the positives are that b2b segments of the companies have reported a strong volume growth due to higher government capex government orders could moderate ahead of election pre sales growth for residential realty companies are strong margins have improved due to lower raw material cost and cash flow from operations have improved on a year on year basis we suspect that there could be some downside surprises to earnings in the coming quarters given consumption demand recovery is very gradual and exports continue to face the headwinds we continue to seek better margin of safety due to an unattractive spread between earnings yield and bonds yield now coming to the global fixed income market Apart from the continuous repricing of market expectations on the Fed policy stance, large and widening fiscal deficits and the associated supply pressures have had its impact on treasury yields on a more directional basis. Data surprises continue to lead near-term volatility in either direction. This could well remain the new normal. as the fed decides how long to maintain the policy rates at the current level the highlight of the indian fixed income market was significant tightening in the money market liquidity leading the overnight rates to trade 25 to 30 basis point above the repo and t bill rates to move up to a part of this tightness could rectify as there are nearly 2 trillion of gsec maturing between the last week of november by the end of jan that said we expect fiscal year to end with relatively neutral to tight liquidity though weekly swings could be the inherent future where money market rates moved up india's gsec saw nearly 10 basis point downward move in the yield within the 2 to 15 year segment during last month India's growth data is yet to come out at the time of recording. It will most likely underscore the resilience of India's growth and hence no rush to cut the policy rate any soon. Hence RBI could stay put to its 4% inflation target. Market technicals on demand supply continue to remain broadly supportive. Now, prospects of positive real rates, better fiscal outlook potential index inflows and a mature rate cycle provide confidence to add portfolio duration on upticks with a longer term holding period money market assets on the other hand continue to provide adequate value and inflation adjusted carry for short holding period investments within the asset class g second sdl provide higher relative value over high grade bonds as spreads remain tight especially at the longer end of the curve signing off for this month thank you mutual fund investments are subject to market risks read all scheme related documents carefully